This is what the USS Fitzgerald was doing. It's called LAWS. It is a laser system that has been in use by the US Navy for a few years now. Aboard the USS Fitzgerald, however, they have a very beefed up version of it. And they were using it to knock down and screw up the electronics of those ICBMs that kept failing over and over again when launched from North Korea. I am more convinced of this now than I have ever been, and let me walk you through the logic of why I think this explains everything. Now I would like to give credit where credit is due. A young lady that I served with in intelligence services many years ago, who is a lot smarter than I am, she was a 98 Golf, I was a 97 Echo, brought up a point that to this date I have not seen in any of the comments in anywhere. It has to do with that patch below the waterline. She said, they're not trying to hide the damage. They don't want you to know what's on the other side of that hole. And we've all just been taking the Admiral at his word that it is sleeping berths and an innocuous auxiliary machine room that's on the other side of that. Now, I thought initially, just as an OPSEC guy, that revealing that that's where 116 sailors sleep to anybody who would be our enemy in the future was kind of a stupid statement to begin with. I mean, if they didn't know where to direct a weapon to kill a third of the crew, they do now. But of course, she said he wouldn't do that. He's not that stupid. There's something behind that hole they don't want you to see, and it's not the damage. What it is, is this weapon system. Now, the first thing folks are going to say is like, wait a minute, that mounts up on the deck. Yes, the delivery system does. But the lasers themselves originate below deck and come up through. And that's where the heart of the beast is. For this thing to work properly, the ship would have had to be at anchor to do what they were doing with it. And that would explain why a lookout could have failed and not seen this ship coming. They would have not been able to move if they had their anchors set. And it takes a while to pull up those anchors. When you look at the Fitzgerald and you look at this damage, I can see two probable locations of where that above-board laser was mounted that they had to remove very quickly. See there? See that big, round, white, empty spot? Maybe back here, maybe not quite so much, but I'm guessing right here and straight down, probably back through here, is where the laser system was. And they knew, they knew if they didn't patch that hole and they drained this thing out in dry dock, all of those lines, all of that machinery that backs this thing up would have been exposed. And this ship would have been exposed for what it was doing. And it's no coincidence that only a matter of days after this one destroyer gets removed from the theater, the North Koreans make a quantum leap in ICBM success anyway. They probably always had the technology, but this ship, or one like it, was sitting out there screwing up the electronics with that laws system. And you can read about it here if you want to. I'm sure there's a lot more to it than what's widely available and what's on the internet. But it does speak down here to what I said about the ship not being able to uh, be transiting. It has to be almost stationary to main line, maintain line of sight, to maintain the beam. And this thing has been permanently mounted on the ponts for, since 2014. And it's, you know, dealing with close-in little ships, and it's fried up some 
outboard motors and different things like that, but I will bet you anything. And it, it, it does. It makes absolute sense why the fits couldn't get out of the way. It makes total sense. What also got me thinking is, when remember when we did this, the, the layout of the porter, when the porter got hit, and I showed how nobody had a problem showing the inside of the USS Porter? Because all you can see here is really, what, a filing cabinet and some busted wiring and some conduit. There was a whole lot more sneaky stuff down there below decks. And it also would explain the low loss of life. Because those weren't, those weren't sleeping berths down there. There was a very high-tech piece of electronics on board that vessel. That vessel was at anchor so that it could maintain. And it probably just did not have enough time to get out of the way now. The thing with the, the crystal, I'm still 50-50 on whether... I'm not really 50-50. They still easily could have missed that ship. Even on visual. I had a, somebody come here and talk about the bow thruster that's on these ships. And to, you know, kick in that bow thruster and move the front of that ship one way or the other two or three hundred feet. To miss the, the fits if it was sitting there at anchor in dark. And the captain of the, of the crystal said he saw the ship and he saw it a long way off. You know, at 10 minutes at 18 knots is a pretty good distance. So I didn't really want to address that issue, but I think we know, I think we know that this is what the U.S. Navy was doing, and this fills in the piece of the puzzle about why the Navy was behaving like they did and why they tried to construct a narrative right off the bat. Because if you think about it, it wasn't really necessary for them to come out in two days and tell us where the captain was, that he was sleeping, that he was outside the skin of the ship, that he was lucky to be alive. They didn't need to tell us what was behind that hole below the waterline. You know, that, that wasn't necessary at that time to come out and put out all of that information, given that they didn't even know when the, the timing of the event was. In that press conference, they said 2.20 three different times, and it's been revised back to 1.30. So they weren't in command of the facts at the time, and for them to be speaking in detail like that is incredibly irresponsible, or they were trying to construct a narrative. And now I think we know what the narrative was. They don't want the North Koreans knowing that this is what's going on, or maybe the North Koreans know, but they just don't know where. But anyway, this is... Uh, Probably going to lead some very interesting discussions. Um, I would like to know what you guys think. You guys have been great. The channels continue to grow. Like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time. Thank you.